Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm ZS Karava from CK Research, and I'm here at RSA in the HPE Aruba Suite with Larry Lunetta. Uh, Larry, your SVP of uh, product marketing. You've been in that role a while. Uh, how are things going? Uh, very exciting. This is one of our favorite shows. We're at RSA, as you yeah. said, and uh, you know it really plays to our strengths as a security-first, AA-powered networking uh, provider. And as we'll talk about, there are a number of key trends yeah. that manifest itself based on what we see on the show floor and some of the announcements we've made. Yeah, we've been talking about this trend of network and security convergence uh, for a long time. Uh, in fact, it's, it's interesting, ever since I've known Aruba, prior to the HPE acquisition even, I used to always describe Aruba as a security company right. dressed up as a, as a Wi-Fi company and then later a networking company. Yeah. Now, I do think in a lot of ways the industry has caught up. So certainly there's much more focus on network security convergence. And I'm curious from your standpoint, uh, why now, why is this happening now? After all these years of us talking about it, it's like now uh, the practitioners are, are actually focused on that. Yeah, I think it's from two perspectives. One is the organization, as you said, is mandating that. It used to be security was about the no and networking was about the yes. Right, and yeah. they had sort of two different objectives. Well, that's you can't tolerate that now. You have to have both. So they have to work together to execute that. And the other thing is, uh, the network is becoming much stronger and much richer from a security solutions perspective. And at the show, we're we're demonstrating. We just announced uh, a number of built-in security improvements uh, to our HP Aruba Networking Central uh, network management system. Uh, one of them is, you know, a next generation network access control yep. based on, you know, it's cloud native delivered by central. So, you know, we have had a long history of leading in the NAC market yeah, yeah, right, yeah. with ClearPass and things yeah. like that. I mean, we've had NAC for forever. Yeah, yeah, almost from the beginning of when we started the company. Right. So, you know, but now cloud has changed the paradigm and we're going to take advantage of that. And we're also going to take advantage of the fact that the, the idea is networking and security have to work together. So the tools have to be easy to use. And that's one of the attributes of our announcement, the, the cloud-based NAC solution. Simple user interface, business intent, no CLI programming or anything like that. You define the policy and that can be done by security. And then it becomes a natural part of the network management workflow. So if you stand up a new switch or access point, the policies come along. So there's no separate action. Yeah. Uh, very powerful, and then of course, our infrastructure natively will enforce those policies. No additional appliances, no more agents, just built into the infrastructure. So that whole package really democratizes NAC and it opens it up to a much broader market. And what I like about your solution is actually, it's not, it lets the security administrators do their things, it lets network administrators do what they have to do, exactly. and then it creates a combined way for them to work. So it's not like it's forcing net ops to work like SecOps or vice versa, right? Which is really important for success. Exactly yeah. right, and then if you get to smaller organizations, they may not have separate yeah. groups. It's the same person, so we're making it easier for that person to execute both missions. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, over the last few years, in fact, with a lot of the return to office coming, companies have been putting more and more connected things in, right. which is driving more, uh, I mean, we didn't really call it IoT, we're just connecting more stuff, <laughs> right? Uh, but that's driving the need for access control even more. Yeah, and it, it's especially difficult with things because they don't have the same attributes, they don't yeah. carry certificates and things like that, so you have to identify them and assign policies a different way. And as you know, we use AI for that. Yeah, yeah. And talk about that, that how AI has really helped you change the way people run the network. Well, as I said, uh, in identifying a device like a camera or a sensor, the AI can do you know, behavioral profiling so that you know, with a high degree of uh, accuracy, we can automatically decide what just joined the network and assign the policy based on the yeah. NAC. Right. The other way we're using AI, and, and it was part of one of the announcements we made, is in behavioral analytics. And we have a long history of uh, uh, behavioral analytics and machine learning, uh, looking at what's normal and then flagging what's not. And the announcement we just made is we've built in distributed denial of service detection in our SD-WAN appliances. Mm -hmm. And we use AI to build the automated baselines and look for those anomalies where we either have to throttle bandwidth or cut off a connection because it might be a denial of service attack. Yeah, to me that's one of the real low-hanging fruit use cases of AI as well. 
is uh, is looking for those anomalies. Yeah. I think uh, networks today, um, uh, not just with HP to Ruby, but all network vendors create so much telemetry information yes. that um, you know. I think back in my day as an engineer, if you're a good engineer, you could kind of look through the data, yeah. figure out something's going on, but you just people can't anymore, right? Right. Yeah. And telemetry, if you walk the floor you'll see that telemetry is front and center for many vendors because that's what their customers are asking yeah. for. And if you get the right telemetry at the right time, your network runs better and you're better protected. And we feel we're, as you know, we're in a very strong position yeah. because of our data lake and the way we use the data in a variety of ways. Yeah, and staying on the AI theme, <clears throat> obviously if you go down to the show floor, you're gonna see the word agentic written all over the place, <laughs> right? And uh, what that does is it allows, in fact, I saw, um, I think in The Economist, somebody saying that uh, this is the last era of business leaders that will ever manage a human-only workforce, right? And meaning that we're going to have some combination of people uh, in, in, uh, in machines. And so from a network operations perspective, what are the kind of things that you think um, Agentic AI will allow, uh, will do for the network? Um, for, you know, from a NetOps perspective. Well, it, it really gets back to the point that you made. It's impossible for a network administrator yeah. to see all the data and make sense of it in real time, certainly, or even in a time where they can take an action. So AI has continually improved in taking that data, you know, drawing conclusions, correlating it, and making recommendations. So Agentic is just the next step. So earlier in April, we announced for HP Aruba Networking Central a fabric of agents that, will, uh, that are very uh, tightly defined in terms of their mission. They're looking at very specific parts of the network and for very specific conditions, and they report out what they see. Agentic AI will take the next step where those agents will report to a super agent, mm. and the agent will do all the correlation and interpretation and, and present a much more actionable recommendation and set of information to the analyst. And of course, the next thing you're going to say was, that sounds like a self-driving network. And yes, that's the road to yeah. the self-driving network. Just like as we were talking about, a Waymo is yeah. on the road to a self-driving vehicle, right? Yeah, I do think there's some lessons in that too. I think um, it's interesting, I was a CES earlier this year, and um, I was talking to somebody that said it, it appears no, no progress has been made in uh, self-driving vehicles because 10 years ago we talked about it, we still don't have it, but I think if you look at just the number of AI features in cars with lane change alert, things like right. that, it, they're much safer and they're much easier to drive and I think that's where we are with the network. It's not fully self-driving today, but a lot of the things that create a lot of heavy lifting, in fact, uh, Wi-Fi troubleshooting, I've always said it's one of the hardest things to do right. in, uh, uh, in networking and AI can help us do that a lot better now, right? That's yeah. exactly yeah. right. So a lot of the manual work, a lot of the hard sort of correlation that you have to do. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's as much cultural as it's technology. The technology is moving very fast. Yeah. So it's a matter of how much do you trust before you get to that point. Yeah, I'm, uh, that, that's an interesting topic itself. It's worth a whole other discussion. I'm, I'm waiting for the next, uh, the first time somebody has a network outage and it's because they took the advice of the AI and didn't do their own checking. But yeah. that's coming, so. Well, yeah, yeah, hopefully not soon. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, the other one of the big shifts I've seen in HPE as a company is much tighter integration and product development between uh, what you would have called the traditional HP half right. and the Aruba half, right? And uh, but now there's more joint solutions. He has them here at this event. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're showcasing integration with OpsRamp, which yeah. is the third-party monitoring solution that sits in HPE GreenLake Cloud Platform. Uh, but we're also uh, we just announced something called a digital circuit breaker, and it has to do with hybrid cloud. And the idea is that hybrid cloud um, is a mix of on-premise solution, you know, a stack of servers, storage, yep. and networking, and then some cloud control. Well, organizations, especially financial organizations, have to comply with something called DORA. Yep. That's an uh, EU directive. It stands for Digital Operations Resiliency Act, right? So the idea is if there's a, a threat detected by the security team, you know, they issue an instruction to cut the cord, to, to actually air gap what's on the floor, what's on premises. And that's what we call the digital circuit breaker. The equipment and the, um, the, the on-premises part of the infrastructure still operates. You can still um, run workloads and things like that. You just air-gapped. It's yeah. just air-gapped. And then when the, the threat passes, you reconnect 
and all the data that needs to go back up into the cloud goes into the cloud. So that's an example of broadly how HPE is looking at this whole environment and it really has to do with security, resilience, and compliance. And you'll see more and more of our portfolio, for example, we announced the ProLiant Gen 10 servers yep. and they have a well-developed protection mechanism for the firmware and boot process so they can't be tampered with. We have Zerto, which is a, you know, a wonderful recovery and backup system that we've integrated with our networking solutions so that we have an end-to-end -end ransomware detection and response capability. So over time, you're gonna see HPE more and more push into this, as I said, security, resiliency, and compliance environment. Yeah, well, and the timing's uh, right as well. Like, I think we talked about security and networking coming together. I think one of the things AI has driven is compute and networking and security, frankly, all come together right. as well. So it's hard to decouple those systems now. That's right, and, and a lot of times you're gonna see vendors uh, highlight, well, we're uh, AI security vendor. We look at security for AI as a subset of what we do. You know, it has specific attributes, but for example, what I talked about from a NAC perspective, you can get to the point where you can say, me as a data scientist will only have access to certain models and certain data. So if I get attacked, if I get compromised with a ransomware attack, the blast radius is a lot less. Yeah. I mean, you know, the damage is a lot more contained. So those kinds of things happen naturally if you're well protected starting with the network. All right, Larry, well, so we had uh, more security network integration, more cross HP integration and better operations at uh, this year's RSA. That's right. So, uh, the security business is uh, continues to grow rapidly and yeah. we're a key player there. Well, it's, uh, it's always been, a, uh, I think, one of the hallmarks of uh, HP Aruba. So uh, uh, congrats on the continued uh, development in that area. All right. So, Thank you very much. So on behalf of Larry Lanetta from uh, HP EM, ZS Caravalo from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.